main takeaway is we were waiting for the 10 o'clock hour. This is that silver bullet that I was giving you in that Twitter space. Some of the newer folks are like, what did you say? Silver bullet. What's that? Silver bullet trade, ICT, is a setup that will form every single day. Every single day it will form. And what you're looking for is between 10 o'clock New York local time and 11 o'clock New York local time. There will be a displacement in a direction that you should be anticipating. Once that displacement occurs, you're waiting for a fair value gap to form. When it does, you're going to be expecting that to be traded into and then repriced to a pool of liquidity that would be opposing your entry. For instance, what we're outlining here. We've already seen you know, a small minor delivery of it. I mean, it's been five handles or so since that, that run in here. But the the expectation is for you to anticipate this formation in price every trading day. Every single trading day it will form, which is why I call it silver bullet. It's a move that will always be there. They will never be able to hide it from you. They're never going to be able to change it. Nothing's going to change it. It's always going to be there. There's never any reason for you to doubt that it won't exist. Okay, And it's also a way to train yourself patience, teaching yourself patience sticking to a model and some rule-based ideas and those being you're looking for five handles that's it as a new student as someone that's just now starting to become interested in the marketplace it's it's a little intimidating isn't it who do you listen to who do you trust what do you waste your time on in the beginning and regret later on and you want to avoid that you want to go to the people that have the best stuff you're thinking that there's a system or a teacher out there is going to teach you how to never lose. They don't exist. I'm not that guy. So there's a lot of things that go through your mind when you first get involved in all this stuff. So I try to be as responsible as I can and say things like uh, you're going to practice in a demo. You're not going to trade with live funds. You're going to decide if you ever decide to do that. I don't ever tell you to do that. But I promise that you're going to see things in price that are very consistent they're rule-based structured approaches for you to go in and study like a laboratory experiment. If I was to say to you, go out there and find some random fair value gap and pick a sell side or buy side liquidity pool and good luck at it. Right away, 90% of you going to be like, what am I supposed to do with that? This guy's not teaching me anything. Versus, okay, if I tell you, you hear my stomach, I'm, <laughs> I'm starving. Two days fasted. So if we are looking at a time window very specific time window 60 minutes okay inside of one hour you can find a five handle run that's reasonably easy in my in my opinion and of course my opinion is, is biased because i've been doing it a lot longer than you but out of all the things that i teach i think that it's visually easy to see a fair value gap it's easy to see that but it may not be easy for you right now, but it's easier to see that than a breaker. It's easier, way easier to see it than determining what order block to trade off of. You know, it's there's a there's a graduation between one PD array and understanding it to the next. But you only need one. And if if you remember I set that twenty twenty two model up with my daughter in mind. Like I wanted to see her use that model. And I don't want to see any excuse for her to say, well, I, I can't see it because the fair value gap jumps off. It's literally there in a chart. And, and even someone with a you know, short span, uh, span of attention, if I spent time with them I mean, going through charts and showing it to them, they could see it and they could go into the charts and find it in hindsight. But they don't have the experience to see it forming real time. And that's what these live sessions and that's what the Twitter experience with me is helping with. It does not remove the necessity for you to be looking and studying, not just on those instances where I'm taking your attention to, but other old moves and studying that and seeing it repeat over and over and over again. My stomach is talking.
but the silver bullet is a time specific setup that forms between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock and I know you're already going to ask why does it only work in 10 and 11 o'clock well that's the morning session silver bullet there's an afternoon session that I'll teach you later on yeah all year okay all kinds of tricks to show you but between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock what you're looking at is the last portion of the the move that's going to unfold just for that a.m. session and you're right in the heart of the move and fair value gaps are generally forming after a move begins there's an inception of a move that you missed that's like selling short above old highs you didn't get in it you didn't you weren't able to do that but you don't need that like I was teaching with the 2022 model you don't need that to be able to do consistent setups between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock you are in the heart of the a.m. session move which is essentially between 8.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock. It can go as far as noon, the beginning of New York lunch hour, but it's, again, a graduated thing in terms of time. There are macros that exist in price where between 9.50 and 10.10, in that 20 minute period, generally you're gonna see a price run that begins within that 20 minute span. There's people out there trying to teach my stuff already in their little mentorships or their, their thing in discords and such, Instagram. And they're already trying to say, the move happens between 9.50 and 10.10. You're already doing it wrong, so stop trying to teach my stuff. The move begins in those 20 minutes. <clears throat> it's not the entirety of, I mean, obviously it can, I mean, in a fast move or a fast market, it can do that. But what you're looking for is a run that begins between 9.50 and 10.10. That's the macro. It starts doing its run between those two time windows. There's another macro that exists at 10.50 and 11.10. There's two macros that start in those two, in those two hours. The silver bullet is specific to the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour. And what we're looking for is an obvious pool of liquidity that has not been tapped into or engaged, which you know, I've mentioned, obviously, you know, with the lines here, you see it. You're not demanding that you capture the daily range. You're not demanding that it goes to your technical target. You're only expecting it to give you your five handles. Big paradigm shift there because a lot of you also are taking this idea <clears throat> and trying to make more of it than it really is. Will there be times when that move is a significant higher low of the day and it just keeps on running? Yes, yes. But in the beginning, you don't know when these are going to be there. You don't know what that criteria is to cause that. That's a whole lot of other things that you have to learn progressively over time. So I'm reminding you as gently as I can to stick to the rules I'm telling you to stick to. And that way you won't be taken into these false expectations that it's gonna do much more than it's designed to do. Case in point, fair value gap, I told you that we extend that forward. When it was bumping up on the bottom of that, here I was looking at the five minute chart, I thought it was a one minute chart because I was busy talking to you. I said I would go short there with the expectation of run lower. If you see that price there at 78 and three quarters, that's better than five handles. Did it take the sell side? No, but that's the, that's the structure that we used for draw and liquidity. Remember, I teach partials. I teach that you have to pay yourself. I teach you that it's just a way for you to frame your expectations on where the price should gravitate to. To go back up to a five-minute chart real quick. <clears throat> so here's the, the low I was an anticipating a draw to. Fair value gap here on a five-minute chart as it went up into there. So as we hit that, if it were not seeing these relative equal lows here, 
we didn't have the relative equal lows, if it was just one singular low, that would be an aggressive entry for me and it would be where I told you. And it delivered immediately, as I said, attacking this short term low. It offered more than five handles, that would be it. Now, compare and contrast, and I know some of you probably already in this trade and you were probably holding on for this sell side and this probably just ripped against you. Don't take the trades. You're learning how to read a tape. Everything I just explained to you has not been explained anywhere else about this type of setup between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. You didn't have that insight before you pushed the button. You had no idea what you're doing. You're impulsively trying to do something based on what I'm saying real time. Instead of learning the lessons from watching and listening to what I'm expecting, what rules are there, what parameters are there. You can't learn doing what you're doing by pushing a button. You can't do that. You have to learn it and then go practice with it. Go look for it in old moves. That's the order of things. You don't learn how to do it by listening to me and trying to do it as I talk about it. That's not how you learn. So anyway, the delivery of five handles, that's the easy, absolute, 100% guaranteed time specific setup that if you are a brand new person or someone that's coming to this channel for the first time, a setup that forms so consistently, so routinely, there's so many things that are inside this model and it's a complete model. It's an entire model in and of itself. Think about what it's offering. You don't have a whole lot of time? Okay, no problem. You wanna do this while you have your day job? Does your job permit you to have a lunch hour early in the day between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock? Because if, if so, I would take my lunch then. That way you're not stealing time from your employer. You're being a good steward and your time won't be divided or your attention won't be divided during that time because you'll be expected to do what you're being paid to do by your boss instead of watching candles form on your charts. If you are looking for a way to not spend so much time in front of the charts, which I can tell you is a good thing because it's fatiguing over time. I don't care how much money you make, it's still very fatiguing to do it. It will wear on your eyes, it will wear on your back, it will wear on your body and your stress. So you wanna kinda keep it to an optimal level. And I, I can't find a way <laughs> to be more optimal than a one hour trading work day. Between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, you know you absolutely know that this formation is going to be there. It's going to be there. Now, does that mean that you're going to have a winning trade every single day between 10 and 11 o'clock? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It just means that you have an opportunity to have something that statistically is there all the time. And I don't want you to take my word at this. I want you to go back and look at every single trading day you can have data on and go through and see it's there. Now, what you need to practice is understanding, as I mapped out this morning, you don't need to be right about your levels. You just need to be right about, does it offer the range? Does it offer something better than five handles? Because if it can move better than five handles, chances are you probably will get five handles out of it. What do I mean by that? When we were looking at this fair value gap here, and it was bumping up and against it here, I said, okay, if we didn't have the relative equal lows here being specifically this low and that low, what was my apprehension? Because this could be a run lower, take the sell side out, and then rip higher and complete that new week opening gap high here. So it's not, it's not a singular low, it's relative equal lows. So there's going to be sell side below that. So they went down below it, yes, but I wanted to see this low taken out. That was one I would, would have been preferring, rather. But an aggressive entry would have been right here. Did it offer five handles? Sure. Did it get to the sell side? No. Is it mean? Does it mean, rather, the, the model's broken? No. You're operating inside these rules with the expectation that it's going to offer you five handles. You might not get it. It might be an instance where you're watching price and you expected to do something. Like, I would... What, what I was looking for and it might not deliver it to you because your parameter, your entry, your limit order didn't get tagged in. You can't look at that as a reason to be upset. You can't be thinking, well, I wasted my time. 
how many 10 o'clock to 11 o'clocks in the future are going to be available to you? As long as you have breath, right? As long as you have your mental faculties and the markets are open, you have lots of those laboratory experiments to, to work with now. Will it take you two years to grow confident in using this as a model? I don't think so. But I think about two to three months is realistic because you want to see previous data to confirm what I'm suggesting to you is valid. Then, when you see all that, then you'll feel comfortable with investing the time of walking forward with it, tape reading it. And you do that for several months. That way, when you're bored of it, and you just you see it, you just you're not in, you're not emotional about it, not nervous, not excited because it moved in your favor. You're just completely indifferent to the outcome. That means you're bored. That is the only time that if a trader thinks like that, then they can entertain the idea of maybe putting real money at work. But that's a decision that you you determine that. And when is it going to be where you're bored? It's all completely objective from your perspective only. And it would be foolish of me or anyone else trying to be a mentor or a teacher to say you're ready when this and this. No. The only defining determination is you know that you're not emotionally stimulated by the outcome. You're not chasing a feel-good moment. You're not trying to replace a bad experience with a good win. And you're just following the rules. And that's a very hard thing for you to understand, especially if you're new, because you don't even have any rules. You don't have any experience. You haven't seen this form in, the, in previous data enough times to know that what I've said it exists every day. Between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, identify liquidity, find a fair value gap. The fair value gap has to be opposing, in other words, opposite to the direction that you anticipate the liquidity to be drawn to. For instance, fair value gap after displacement lower, we wait for it to trade up into the fair value gap and then trade towards a pool of liquidity lower in the form of sell side. If you're bullish, you're looking for the market to trade higher, displacement higher, leave a fair value gap below market price, then trade down to the fair value gap, and then gravitate towards a pool of liquidity, which would be buy side that hasn't been engaged yet. And it has to have better than five handles in terms of the range from where you think it might get to. Not that it needs to get there. Remember, I'm teaching you how to look at price, removing the necessity of being right. Because right is not, it's not a destination. Being correct is not a destination. Excellence in execution is, and it has a very small population. The only way you get to be a member of that is by doing the things I'm telling you to do and avoid the things I'm telling you to avoid. 